Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to another exciting episode of our Port Swigger Web Security Academy series lab walkthrough. <sighs> okay, that was fun. Uh, that's a lot of things to say in one. I can't believe I got all that correct. But today we are looking at an SSRF. That's right, a server-side request forgery attack in this lab. It's a basic one, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. But it will give you some insight into how this works in real life land, even though if it is a bit of a contrived uh, lab. And that's the idea is to kind of get your feet wet on this, right? This is the apprentice track. So we got to start somewhere. And I get it. You're, you're cool. Let's do it. Let's jump down in here. Basic SSRF against a local server. Let's see the details. This lab has a stock check feature, which fetches data from an internal system. Remember, that's how SSRF works. The web app says, hey, server, can you do this for me when you make a request, right? And he goes, yeah, sure, why not? It's server-side requests. We're going to forge that request and change it, I'm guessing, right? It says, to solve the lab, check the um, change the stock check URL to access the admin interface at http colon forward slash forward slash localhost forward slash admin, and then delete Carlos. Okay, straightforward, simple, little, not a lot to this. We find the SSRF, that uh, uh, injection point. We forge the SSRF and we fire and forget. We do need one thing up and running though. We need Burp Suite. So I want to fire that up. Pen testing, most used, and that will be wherever you do that voodoo that you do. So if you're running Kali or whatever, you know what to do. Get that thing up and running. I want to update. I just want to get started and do that. And while that's firing off, I'll make sure to use Foxy Proxy and turn my proxy on. That's why I love Foxy Proxy. It makes this easy. Otherwise, you got to go into the settings of your browser and everything like that. Uh, I love how a lot of Linux does that, where if I start something on an, in another virtual desktop, and I move to another one and it completes opening, it jumps to that desktop. So I'm just going to right click in the title bar there and then move that back to workspace too. All right. I've already hit access the lab. A weird funky thing about this. I haven't like deleted my cookies or anything like that. So maybe that's what's causing this. You'll notice it says, congratulations, you solved the lab. Yeah, because I have solved the lab and I, I didn't care to try to, you know, clean out my browser history or whatever. Uh, maybe I could have done it in a, you know, private tab or something, but uh, I, I, this does not go away for me for whatever reason, but it's not really a problem. We're, I can still show you how to do this. So now that that is up and running, I'm going to go to the proxy tab, turn the intercept off because I don't really need that. And I'm just going to hit that HTTP history tab. All right, back to the, the lab itself. And here, what we need to do is go to this is a web shop, right? It's got items, they have prices, and you hit view details. Underneath that detail tab, once that actually spins up, you have the item, you have the stars, you got the description, and then you have this area right here with a drop down for an area, and then you can check the stock. If I hit the check stock button, it tells me there are 401 units in London. Simple, okay? This is, but remember, it said that that is where. The problem is that the stock check feature fetches data from an internal system. We want to change it to this. So I'm going to copy that because we're going to need it. Right click and copy. All right, move back to Burp Suite. Now we see a lot of stuff going on here, but what we're all we're really worried about is obviously not YouTube. Well, I don't know why we're getting YouTube stuff. Interesting. I'll just uh, delete that. Delete these selected items. Yes, they're just in my way. I like this post request right here because it says forward slash product forward slash stock. That seems like what I'm looking for. And now I can pull this up and see the request on the left side, the response on the right. And if I look at this request, I see it is a post request, right? I can highlight that. We see right here, that is a post request for product stock. Yep. Okay. Now down in the body, boy, whatever YouTube, I don't know what YouTube's going on up there, but it keeps doing that. And here's what you can do. Go to target and say, right click, add to scope. Yes. Yay. Go back to proxy. 
I can delete these stupid YouTube. They're just cluttering my world up. And delete those selected items again. Now I shouldn't get any more YouTube things. All right, back to my post request. All right, from there, I've got this. Down at the bottom, I got that uh, the data that goes along with the post request. And it is stock API equals blank, blank, blank. Right, and I can I can highlight this, and you can see that over here. And you'll notice that this is a uh, URL encoded URL: HTTP percent three A percent two F percent two F. That's colon forward slash forward slash, as represented in URL encoded uh, data. And then it's got stock dot. We like we like to shop. Yeah, well, it's, it's a weird break there. We like to shop.net. And then I see this percent three A. And you can see this is all right here. Percent three A, 80, 80. Percent three A is a colon in URL. And if you're wondering how I know that, if you just go to like Google things and you say ASCII table, ASCII table, go for your, your first link that returns ASCIItable.com works for me. And we'll see an ASCII table right there. Control, try to, that looks good. And you'll see, what was it? Percent 3A, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. You'll notice there's a, a hex value. This is a picture, it's not actual text. There's a hex column. You've got all these columns decimal, hex, octal, HTML, and what character it represents. So this is the decimal represent. So 32 is the decimal representation of the space character, the white space character. If I wanted the exclamation point, it would be decimal character 33. If I wanted hex, it would be 21. Octals 041. HTML uh, encoding is percent uh, hashtag 33 semicolon, right? What I'm looking at is this hex column right here. And if I scroll down, I can see percent 3A. I'll kind of blow this up a bit bigger for you so you can actually see what's going on. If I can, yeah, there it is. I was looking for my, my little bar. Percent 3A, right there it is. There it is, 3A, not 3.9, is a colon. That's how I know that, okay? So back to business. So I see percent 3A, 8080. That means it's on port 8080. That's... That's uh, it's one of those telltale signs that it very well may be an internal resource that this thing is re requesting to. So you're like, well, we, we were told it was an internal resource by Port Swigger because they said Labstock has a feature which checks or fetches data from an internal system. Right? We know that. But that port 8080 might be a good indicator that that is something that you have found uh, if you're looking for it and you don't know that. So cool. Let's change it. So I'm going to come back over here to our request. I'm just going to right click somewhere, hit send to repeater, go to the repeater, and I'm going to hit send. I'm just going to fire it off. Bam, send. Notice I get a 200 and I get the amounts. Because uh, remember, it's doing that stock check and it shows 591. The answer is 591. That's what was returned by that function. But I'm changing things. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to remove that internal resource for doing stock API checks. And I'm just going to back it up to that equal sign and then paste in. Where's my paste? Where's my paste? There it is. Booyah. The actual other internal resource we want, which is the local host. I can use 127001. I can use local host. Sometimes you can use, um, uh, I think an IPv6 address might work from time to time. So there's different ways in which you might access uh, 192. Or 169, especially if you're working in cloud, right? You got 169.254, you know, ooh, gets fun in AWS land with SSRFs. But there you go. That's it. So I'm going to hit send. And look, I still get a 200 OK. But I have vastly different other things, right? The rest of that response is a lot of stuff. And it says basic SSFR against the local host. And as I kind of scroll through here and I'm looking at things, uh, there's the congratulations you solved the lab, but don't worry about it. Pretend that's not there. Hand wave that away. What I would need to do is just kind of keep scrolling, looking at everything that's available. 
looking at all the options. I want to read all this. Yes, you, you, you need to do that. That is a part of actually doing web application security and pen testing and that kind of stuff. You're going to have to look at a bunch of stuff like this and sift through it to find those, those lovely little bits. And I've already see a lovely little bit because I see href home. Hmm. That's a link to home href admin. Oh, there's a link. Oh, href my accounts, right? I actually access the admin page. And if I keep scrolling down, any other good stuff here? And that's that's probably why I'm, I'm not seeing it. So right here, I see href admin forward slash delete question mark username equals wiener. Back when I saw this originally, it also had one. And you notice the, the tag for it is delete. <clears throat> so if I want to delete this user named wiener, I would go to this URL. Well, I would just copy that, come down here, paste it in. Well, I guess I need to, yeah, what I, I'm backing off admin. So just make sure you have the right URL and it looks right. So paste that in. So I have HTTP colon forward slash forward slash localhost right there. And that's what the URL looks like. And you can see that over here in the selected text. So HTTP, come on. Grab that. There we go. Localhost admin delete username, but this would be for you, Carlos, like that. And that would prob that would have shown up. I've already deleted him for whatever reason. When I reinstant instantiate the lab, it does not like fix it. It just keeps showing mine as as completed. And maybe, like I said, I got to delete some cookies or something, or who knows why. Uh. Ultimately, I would just do this, but I can delete Wiener. I say we do it. We I N E R just to show you that I can apply those changes. Come back over here and hit send. Full send. I get a 302 redirect. And once I go back to my actual home page, that's when you'll get the congratulations, you have solved the lab. If you had used Carlos, I just deleted the wiener user. He no longer exists in this dojo. Oh, well, what are you going to do, right? Uh, but that was fun. That's how you would solve this lab. Just make sure that the person you're deleting is Carlos, and you're off to the races. Hopefully that's helpful for you to understand how dangerous SSRFs can be, right? The fact that it, it's trusted, right? It's, it's using a very trusted resource where you from the outside should not be trusted. It doesn't know who you are. Even if you've authenticated, you could not be you or you could accidentally do something. So a lot of times they'll use internal resources to make requests and do things for us. And if I find a way to manipulate that and forge my own request, you have a server side request forgery. Booyah. Deleting users. I'm stealing stuff. I'm doing all sorts of crazy stuff. As a, don't do that. Do not do that. Like, don't actually do those bad things. Find where SSRF is, report that to the website owner. If that's you, great, you already know. If you're you know, doing a bug bounty or a web app pen test, you're gonna wanna write that up and submit that as a report and say, hey, I found this. You might wanna verify and fix. And then you might be entitled to compensation from JG Wentworth and <laughs> you need cash now. Or sometimes it's just the right thing to do. Right, so do that. Well, there you go. We have done a basic SSRF against a local server. Hopefully that helped you understand what's happening and help you if you were stuck anywhere in the lab. That's what this is all about. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. And until the next lab, keep hacking.